What's up, Foot Clan? Do not miss today's episode. We've got all our 2021 rankings on the site. Now we're debating all the players that we disagree on. It gets very spicy, very contentious. Don't miss this episode. When it comes to beard, hair, face, and body care products, Scotch Porter means business, fellas. What I love about their products, they're non-toxic, healthy. They really help men with their grooming issues they face daily. And just in time for summer, we can get 50% off. They're having a sale. It's happening right now on their best-selling collections. For that limited time, check out scotchporter.com slash footballers. 50% off. Itchiness, dryness, shedding. When it comes to your beard, your hair, blemishes, bacteria, clogged pores, what, whatever, man. You don't want face. none of that. No, that, you that do not. That terrible. No, and Scotch Porter, they're going to take care of you. Go check them out. Do you need some new grooming products? Of course you do because yes. you want to take care of your beard. For a limited time, visit scotchporter.com slash footballers to pick yours up today. And remember, you're going to get 50% off scotchporter.com slash footballers. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. And welcome back. That didn't feel too bad. It wasn't great, but you're back. You seem to be healthy now. That was Chris Paul game four. Yeah, and that's oh, okay. enough. Okay. It's enough to get the job done. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike Wright, Jason Moore. I'm Andy Holloway. So excited to have you with us. It's Tuesday, June 1st. <laughs> oh, brother. So that means, of course, that May is over. Yes. That's the first thing it means. Um, but far more importantly, what else does it mean? It means that the UDK is up. Ultimate draft kit. Yeah, y'all have it. Can, and but now you can see it. Now you can peruse its beauty. The studio audience is loving it. Yeah. Yeah, you can go to ultimatedraftkit.com. The UDK is out. The UDK app is out. So if you have it, make sure you grab the app. Check it out. We've got some upgrades. Um Easier to mark players, draft players. We have dark mode available now. We have news inside of the app, which is something that is honestly desperately needed right now. Like the amount of news resources in fantasy have actually kind of reduced over the last few years. Uh, and, you know, and we all go potty. And so it's like, you know, oh, what, yeah. what am I supposed to do here? Just go potty? No. No way. Is there a, there's a potty mode? Yeah, it's called the news feed. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so check that out. Today's show is going to be a, a good one. We are breaking down our individual rankings, looking at places where we disagree with the other two gentlemen here on the show, and then asking one another to explain yourself, mm. which is important, um, if anything, to uh, provoke argument here on the podcast, which provokes thought. Yeah, I mean, the, the goal of this episode, we obviously, that's the great thing having three of us is that we take a look at, you know, where we don't just always agree and take a look at two sides of the coin, figure out why are you guys so stupid? And that's the goal yes, is like, yes. what what is wrong with you? Why aren't your rankings like Jason's? And then at the end of this episode, we'll be like, uh, now we're all on board with Jason's ranking. So um, yeah, we normally change our mind. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's really important that we don't just say, hey, I noticed you have a different ranking than I do. What What's going on there? Instead, yeah. you just you antagonize, you insult, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you irritate. Be That's ready right. to That's give right. an, Explain account, yourself. an account of your rankings. Explain it! Uh, I did post a poll on Twitter. 20,000 people voted on the poll. And I asked the question, I'm going to ask you gentlemen, see if we agree on this one. Of the reasons you play fantasy football, which one rises above the rest, which people do not like having to choose one option. I will put it that way. They want all the options, but I said primary reason you play fantasy. Here were the choices. You could say you play primarily because of the friendship and the community aspect. You could say it's the strategy and the competition. You could say it's the amplifying of the NFL and your fandom of these teams. Or it's the gambling or the money potential side of winning a league and mm. and cashing out and making some money. I have already voted on this poll. Have I saw you? it. I participated. And while I do love literally all four of these 
my number one is the is the community, the friendship. Like it, it, it is a, you know, I I wouldn't stay in touch with guys from college if it wasn't for that league. And there's just, you know, it's like that hobby that you've got social participation in. So it's just so much fun. I'm basically doing it primarily for the fun, for the love of the game. Mm. Mike, I voted on your poll. Okay. And I voted the same thing as Jason. Oh. Did you? I did. You like You don't need to explain yourself now. <laughs> because we're on the same yeah, side. Exactly. Yeah, I it's that's what it comes down to. I mean, the second I would say to amplify the the fandom, I like caring about all the games. All the games. Which I mean you you look if you're in the right place you could put a wager on a game or something, but I like having I, I like the stakes in the individual player. It just there's something that is incredibly fun about shouting at a television that your re receiver is wide open. Why is the quarterback so dumb and not throwing him the ball? Yeah, that's great. My second would be the just the competition, the the mm. game. That the was strategy. my strategy. That's your number that one. That was my number one. Yeah. Was the strategy competition? It was a close call. It actually that one won out. Oh really? Forty four percent of people said strategy competition. Thirty one percent friendship community. Amplifying the NFL was. 14%, and then the uh, the money potential was last at 11%. Hmm. Oh, 11 is my favorite so, number, so we're okay. Just thought it was interesting <laughs> to look at why people play. And, and like you said, it's really a factor of all those. It's not like if you're into the competition, part of it's the, you know. I hate winning money here in this league. <laughs> and friendship. You hate, or I hate friendship if right. I choose strategy. All right, you can check out the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. The communities join the foot.com. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. There's not a ton. Corey Davis, minor shoulder strain during OTAs. He'll be ready for week one. Thank goodness. Yeah, I mean, yeah, hopefully he will be. But it's, it, it is interesting that, uh, like, like how, long, how long he is out. I mean, you have a whole new wide receiver court here. You have a new quarterback uh, learning the system, that's that's not great news for Corey Davis to be behind when you Denzel Mims. A little more friendship between maybe the new quarterback and Denzel or Isaiah and, Moore. No, yeah, Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore. Uh, and so I don't know. It's not great for Corey Davis. Did you say Elijah? <laughs> yeah, I think I, I did. I think we got Eliza. no Eliza <laughs> and Peggy. Um, yeah, I, you know what? This I, was I was like correcting myself with the wrong name. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I meant Eliza. Eliza. Uh, I just enjoyed Jason's face in the slow pan of like, <laughs> did I hear that? Um, yeah, the other interesting part of this is that there had been a lot of rumors about um, the Jets maybe moving on via trade or uh, post-June 1st uh, cutting of, of Jamison Crowder. I've, I've heard whispers in the bushes of that. Right. This makes that less likely. Like, you know, if you're missing for training camp or OTAs or, you know, those things, uh, one of your big acquisitions in this offseason – you want to set your new quarterback up for success. I think it would be so stupid of them to get rid of Jamison Crowder too. I agree. For like developing a quarterback. All right. Uh more Packers chatter. The athletic reporting uh Man. Packers general manager quote will not trade Aaron Rodgers this summer. So Here we go. Maybe. Yeah. I I think he'll be under contract. I still stand by that. Yeah, I mean I uh man, I, I don't know where to stand anymore, but I think it's more likely that he retires or just says uh, no um then he gets traded because it really does seem like a stalemate of like Wills? Uh, whose biceps yeah. are bigger <laughs> and aaron Rodgers' biceps are bigger <laughs> got it wouldn't that be great if they just settled it like with arm an, wrestling an arm wrestling match in the gm's office like one battle you trade me or i sign a deal all right, one more. I mean, this is this is apparently hype train. Uh, I have a counter hype train though, because um, I saw multiple stories this weekend about Mr. Antonio Gibson. But calm yourself, Mike. Uh, oh. ESPN reporting that they want to get him to run more pass routes in 2021, which I think would make fantasy players very happy. Mm hmm. But did you see the report of uh, who else was in the backfield taking snaps? Oh, what is it, Curtis? Yeah, this yeah, is Curtis Samuel. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, with with Rivera being there, that you know, that's how he used him down in Carolina. Yeah, so you had uh, they said at OTAs it was Gibson, it was McKissick, and it was Curtis Samuel in the backfield. 
they have weapons on that team, and they also reported that they want to be more aggressive and look for bigger plays down the field, which is what we hope for from Ryan Fitzpatrick and the Terry McLaurin breakout hope. It all comes down to, um, you know, are you going to take chances down the field versus just leaning on your defense? Yeah, and th this is one of those – Anytime there's a hype train moment like this, it's best to ignore it. It doesn't matter. The, there are as many that are true. Ignore the rest. This one's very good, though. <laughs> yes. I mean, it, it's really just, do you <laughs> like this news? Then you will believe it. Do you not like this news? Then you won't. Uh, it does agree with what I thought prior to that. I think they're going to get him on the field more, especially in passing downs. Uh, but be careful with the hype in the offseason. Yeah. I'm sure we will discuss that throughout the Year? Uh, any other news? Any H Julio news that you got for us, Jason? I know you're reporting diligently uh, on the topic. No, I mean, I, I did reach out to a couple of sources, um, and according to them, it's down to the Titans or the Patriots, Chargers, Raiders, or the Seahawks, Cardinals, Ravens, Colts, 49ers, <laughs> Eagles, Rams, Panthers, Bears, Broncos. Wait, no, no, no. The Rams are out, uh, so the Packers, Jags. Oh, the Rams are out. Saints, Vikings, or Washington, or possibly a different team, um, so there are some options. There are some options, but the, you know, TBD. So we'll see soon. June first or later. It's so, today, so funny because tomorrow. Uh, this is a joke because I think there's been four or five reports in the last week of like, this is the new team that is like really close to getting it done. Oh, this team is now the Vegas odds on. Oh, Russell Wilson is talking to Julio. Oh, th it's like just wait a couple of days. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow. We're going to know where Julio's going soon. Yeah, social media is fun like that. And everyone wants to post the pictures of like, our team with Julio would look like this. It's funny. We're recording this the day before. And now I just made this great, just outstanding joke. Just, I mean, what a great joke about all those teams you could go to. Mm -hmm. I would not be surprised if like, right now while you're listening, he's <laughs> already, this, it's already been decided. Yeah, it could. Maybe tomorrow, though. Uh, that was today's news and notes presented by Sleeper. You can switch your league to the fantasy, uh, to the fastest-growing fantasy platform today. They do have best ball leagues now available Ooh. in Sleeper as Fun. well. Let's get to the main event. I'm quite well, thank you. No. Clearly you are not. No rational person would do as you have done. Explain yourself. All right, let's start here because uh, I'm going to put Mike on the spot here. Mm. I want to talk about a player that you have ranked as your wide receiver 16. He's a player that I have always been very supportive of and thought I was um, you know, appropriately ranking this player. So he's our consensus wide receiver 23. You are by far the highest. Right now his ADP in best ball is the wide receiver 25, and you're at 16, so you're significantly higher. And we are talking about Deontay Johnson. Yeah, baby. Wide receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mike, I'd like you to explain yourself. Deontay Johnson, like this is wild what has happened with Deontay Johnson. If you go back a year, okay, Remember this time last year, Deontay was industry-wide. It wasn't just us. It was a lot of people very into the, the breakout potential for Deontay Johnson. He was one of the most popular offseason, not really a sleeper, right? maybe started as a sleeper, but then moved into that breakout uh, area. It was Everyone was all aboard on this. And somehow it, it died off like towards draft season. It, he wasn't getting pushed nearly as hard. Was that Chase Claypool's fault? Maybe. The draft? Because I think his buzz was even before the draft. Yes, yeah, that's what I mean. It was very early in the offseason, and then it died off. And then he legitimately has a breakout campaign, and now everyone's like, nah, nah. I, you're like, wait, we saw it. <laughs> you prognosticated that he was going to break out. He does, and now people are no longer interested in him. He had the sixth most targets at the wide receiver position, and yes, he, wink, wink, appeared in 15 games. But he essentially missed three and a half. He, if you remember back at the, at the beginning of the season, he had those two performances where he got into the game and it looked like things were going to be great, and then he got knocked out. So he missed essentially two games from that, missed one from injury, and then he was, uh, he was benched for a half of a game. But 
in full games. So in games where Deontay Johnson played a full game and games where Big Ben played the full game because Ben didn't play in Week 17, there was only one time that Deontay Johnson did not get 10 or more targets. He was the absolute go-to guy. Which is a silly amount of targets. Yes, and it, the, he will still have that. Like, What have we seen for Ben Roethlisberger in the last uh, 10 years that says he won't just hyper-target on one guy? He won't have his favorite wide receiver. That's what we've seen with him year after year, and Deontay is the favorite of these three. He's the one who gets the most open. And they were still – when we can knock the, the running game, the offensive line – Big Ben's wearing down, and he only has to do all these short passes. They still scored. They they were the 12th highest scoring offense last year. Like They still got it done. It doesn't matter if we like how it's happening. <laughs> it's not aesthetically pleasing. We like the deep shots. But I don't see a world where Deontay Johnson is not in the top five when it comes to targets, assuming that you know he plays in 16 or 17 games. Uh, or, or even somewhere close to that. So I'm just I I don't see where people are down on Deontay, uh, moving into 2021. It's interesting to me because you are very pro Najee Harris. Yes, he, because he's because he should be because he's excellent. But the transactions that the team has made to me that you got to remember we got the American up in here now, Matt Canada. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, the the new offensive coordinator, uh, Matt Canada. Is, so they have replaced the offensive coordinator. They go and they spend a first round uh, pick on a running back because I don't think they want the elder statesman uh, Big Ben to throw near 700 times, which was the 17 game pace. I don't think he's going to throw anywhere near that. I really, really don't. So I, this is why I've got him as my number one target in the offense. But when you combine what I expect a passing volume decrease of the 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 total pie, combined with the fact that while he's an excellent route runner, he he is absolutely he's good at getting open and he will be targeted. They're not the most valuable targets. He's not a supreme athlete uh, like a Chase Claypool on the same team. Um, you know, he was 10 and a half yards of reception last year. So it's like if the if the volume comes down a little bit for the team, I'm going to bet more on the touchdown upside of Claypool. That's why I've got him. I've We have him as the wide receiver 23, right, which is where he finished last year. Um, I don't see him taking that step forward with another year older Big Ben. That's that's my take. Yeah. And I end up in the middle in the ranks. I'm actually more sympathetic to Mike's argument, though, because and I've pointed this out this offseason. The Pittsburgh Steelers' ideology and what they want to be as a team, they have wanted to be able to run the football for five straight years in which their run blocking has declined and their offensive line has been worse. And so wanting something and getting it, it's not immediate. Balance might be more of a priority this year, but that is still speculation. There's no evidence that they are trending in that direction yet, and Deontay is the most valuable target on the team. So I do think that there's more upside. Well, just to add to that, even if they cannot run the ball more because the offensive line does not allow it, part of the reason they went with Najee is because he will get far more targets than what you saw. The, the running backs weren't really targeted last year. So if the total passing offense comes down and Najee siphons some of those short game targets off, which is kind of the game of Deontay, um, I win the argument. Highest target share per snap in the NFL. I just don't. When he's on the field. It, the the volume could go down, but it's still. I mean, what was his touchdown total last year? I think De he had seven. Deontay Johnson had seven. Okay, yes. all right. So that wasn't abnormally low. That was you have him ahead just for people out there who have maybe gone to the website or you want to check the rankings out. You have him going ahead of Tyler Lockett, Robert Woods, Adam Thielen, C.D. Lamb. Mm -hmm. So, and I I'm fine with that. I just what I was saying is, even if the pie shrinks in Pittsburgh, I don't know how much smaller that you can make. There is certainly a bit of a mental impact to the drop controversy at the end of the year, the confidence level of the head coach. And what if something goes wrong? That was playoff weeks. People cared about their starting Deontay. He missed time due to being in the doghouse. So I think that those burns probably have knocked his ADP down even more. Yeah. But in which he responded to the, that by them being the wide receiver 13 and wide receiver 14. Yeah, in, in the semis and championship week. Now, I know this is your opportunity to explain yourself, Jason, but both of your picks today, I am as opposite on as anybody could be. You are, we have very, very large differences. So 
Uh, let's start with the quarterback that that we've selected from okay. your rankings because okay. Mike and I both have this guy <laughs> as a QB one. I have him at ten. Mike has him at twelve. He's on the borderline. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, I like, mean, he, he, he is or he style. isn't, right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, you can't really be at twelve and a half. So he's inside Mike's top twelve, but. Jason's got him significantly lower than we both do, which, you know, where Jason has him ranked, you're not thinking about starting him too often. Let's put it that way. So we're talking about Kirk Cousins, Captain Kirk, quarterback of the Minnesota Vikings, ends up as our consensus QB 15. He's the QB 19 off the board, which is, you know, in some ways, maybe you'd say Andy and Mike have to explain themselves. Yeah, based you're, on, after my after, after me talking, you guys are going to have to explain yourselves. I got that <laughs> got sentence it. out. You got it. <laughs> yeah, I did. You and but I'm going to show you. <laughs> Shut up, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> um, but talk about Kirk Cousins. Set career highs in passing touchdowns and touchdown rate last year. Only ended up at quarterback 11. Has a couple of ex, you know great weapons. Adam Thielen. Justin Jefferson's emergence, which really changes his ceiling, at least game to game. And then Dalvin Cook, of course. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is really a take not about Kirk Cousins because he is excellent. Um, this is a take about the Minnesota Vikings and ironically me believing they're going to be a much better team. So I would say, Captain Kirk, set your phasers to stun because you ain't killing it out there. Here's what I believe about the Vikings. You set your phasers to dumb. Yes, I do, my man. Yes, I do. Guilty as charged. Got him. <laughs> Look, the Vikings have always been a good defensive team with Mike Zimmer, right? I mean, that makes sense. He's a defensive No, minded. last year they weren't good. Okay, that's my point. So, oh, what well, Your point is to say they're always good, but they weren't good last year? My point yeah. is to say the Vikings always. had never ranked worse than 11th in points allowed in the Mike Zimmer era, and then last year they ranked 29th in points allowed. They weren't mediocre they were the third worst I mean they had to throw the ball they had to score a ton of points and that's abnormal for what Mike Zimmer led football teams have ever done and then what do they do in the offseason follow the transactions of a team and not only do you get back uh, Daniil Hunter Anthony Barr Michael Pierce really really good players who missed time but they go and they become the defensive you know free agent victors uh, this year with spending huge money on Dalvin Tomlinson. They added Patrick Peterson, who's not a lockdown superstar corner, but he's a good cornerback in the NFL. This defense is going to be good this year. Mike Clay, you know, his detailed uh, ESPN's Mike Clay, mm -hmm. detailed uh, unit projections, which I just think are unbelievably fascinating to look at and, and so detailed. He has them as the number five ranked defense overall for 2021 based on the current personnel. And he's right. They're going to be a good defense. I mean, that uh, that's my view and also... So you like Mike Clay's projections when they prove your point? Um, when do I not like Mike Clay's projections? <laughs> I like everybody's projections when they prove my point, though. Um, here's the thing. Kirk Cousins is coming off a great year. Career high in touchdown, career high in touchdown percentage, yards per completion, and it was his second highest QBR of his career. He had a great year. But you want to know when he had a higher QBR, when he was a better quarterback? It was simply the year before. His highest uh, you know, best playing quarterbacking of his career. And in that year, when he had a solid 10 win team, he threw for 3,600 yards and 26 touchdowns and was the quarterback 18. Last year's the outlier here. This is a good quarterback with good weapons and a good defense, a good overall team. And I don't think Kirk Cousins and Mike Zimmer are going to go out there and try to throw for 4,535. It's just not, it's, it's well, not I what mean, they want to do. It's not what they're going to do. It's hard to say that it's the outlier. I mean, having Justin Jefferson versus not having him, that's a difference. But you, are you saying that Justin Jefferson is is like clear-cut, far and away better than Stephon Dix? Because I would say that they are the exact same tier of wide receiver. And you could argue that Adam Thielen, now a year older, is going to be the worst version of Adam Thielen that Kirk Cousin has ever had. I just don't think that what they did last year is some sort of pass-happy excessive scheme. Like maybe they go from being one of the worst defenses in the world to middle of the pack. I think projecting them above that would be um, a bridge too far. And last year, they only threw – they were on pace for 17 games, 548 passing attempts. We've seen teams around 700. So that's why I'm a little bit more bullish. But yeah. I know that you expect the defense to improve and, and for them not to throw the ball. But, I mean, Justin Jefferson's going to get his. Dalvin Cook's going to get his out of the backfield, and Thielen will too. So 
So Kirk Cousins has now, in two of his three years, as the quarterback of the Minnesota Vikings, thrown for over 4,200 yards and 30 or more touchdowns. So two out of the three. Uh, but, but the one where he did, and that one's the outlier. That was his best season. But or the, this is the outlier. The, I'm saying that the outlier of the defense and the team was last year. That's my argument. Right, but I'm saying he, Kirk Cousins did that. He did it like two years ago. Or three years ago, if you kind of what has Kirk got to do? Why? Yeah, what has he got to do to get you? Well, he's got to do it. I mean, he's he got to go throw thirty-five touchdowns in twenty twenty-one, and then I'll say I was wrong. That's what he's got to. <laughs> he just to answer your question, that's what he's got to do. So I mean, there's no two way, fewer than last. There's year. no way that I'm taking a, a guy in Kirk Cousins. Like Kirk Cousins' ceiling to me is what he did last year. And obviously, he's not being drafted at what he did last year. He's being drafted where I have him ranked. But when I'm looking at those late round quarterbacks, why would I want to take someone that you know his career high this last season, thirty five touchdowns? That's good, but like it, he doesn't add anything in the rushing game. You know, it, I, I'm on a swing no, for the it's, fences it's, with someone with a high end uh, upside versus hoping hoping he repeats what he did last year. I think that's very fair. And this is an exercise to let you work out all of the thoughts and emotions associated with Kirk Cousins and, and the things he must have done to you. Oh, well, good. I'm glad I could work that out. But I let me just tell you something. When I work that out, I look good. But I didn't look quite as good as when I wear an Indochino suit. <laughs> That's supposed transition. to be a transition. That was, that was incredible. Yeah, thank you. Um, man, so I just had uh, my, my kids' school. We had a, like this gala fundraising event, you know, like this fancy get all, you know, uh, nice and dolled up. And I wore my Indochino suit. I posted it on Instagram. Oh, you did look good. Whew. Dog, yeah. yeah, I was impressed. I was smoking hot. Both, oh, okay. well, I didn't say that. Both, yeah. You know, Take visually and temperature wise. <laughs> cool, cool. We're giving um, you a compliment. You don't go too far. That's that's true. Uh, look, uh, Indochino suits. They've supported this show for a long time. We have all worn them. Uh, I know Mike and I have personally gone down to the Indochino studios and done the 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 showroom where they measure you. They, yeah, it's they, fantastic. It's a perfectly tailored suit, and I'm not the perfect body type where it's like I'm not the Ken doll where I'm buying what the default is. I've got some shape to me, mm -hmm. um, and it, everything fits perfect. The the pants, the the jacket, everything is comfortable, and it looks better than any non-custom fitted uh, suit, shirt, casual wear, whatever you're getting that you could ever get. Every piece is made to your exact measurements, customize every detail. Best part is suits start at just $3.99 with all the customizations included. Shop for your next best look or uh, book a virtual style consultation at Indochino.com. Right now, you can get 50 bucks off any purchase of $3.99 or more using the code FOOTBALLERS at checkout. That's $50 off a purchase of $3.99 or more at Indochino.com. Promo code footballers and before i explain myself i want to thank ip vanish for sponsoring today's episode what is ip vanish it's not the udk it's a vpn vpn a virtual private network a super important tool that helps keep you safe on the internet and uh, you can use ip vanish on computers tablets phones everything even a fire stick if you're streaming media and when you use a vpn uh, what that does is it encrypts all of your data and that's important uh, what you're reading what you're searching what you're watching uh, you're protected on the web and for listeners of the show they have a very special deal right now 65 percent off which is just three dollars and 49 cents for the first month or 31.49 for the year you'll get an anonymous ip address you'll be able to circumvent all the online censorship and uh, you got 24 7 support with ip vanish as well go to ipvanish.com footballers and claim your 65 percent savings Plans, like I said, starting at three forty nine or thirty one forty nine a year, and this is the time to sign up with our discount and the current promotional offerings. You can get a VPN for sixty five percent off their usual offering. They are the best of the best. They are rated four point seven out of five on Trustpilot with more than six thousand reviews. So show them some love. They are repeat sponsors of the show. Remember, it's ipvanish.com slash footballers to get the deal and uh, start protecting yourself today. So I've explained myself once, mm -hmm. Jason. Explained himself once. Mm -hmm. Math checks out. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next up, then, would be Andy. And we need to talk about the smooth one up there, uh, Ken YG, Kenny Galladay. Kenny G so smooth, running them smooth routes, who has just uh, been incredible since he broke out. Wide receiver 21, wide receiver 6 last year. 
yeah, he didn't really play a bunch of games, but he was already trending to be an yeah, upper good, good player, an upper echelon uh, wide receiver. You know, four straight weeks as a top twenty-four wide receiver. Now he got a big bag of money. And yeah, he's playing with Daniel Jones, and Andy has said, "I'm out." <laughs> I'm, I'm, that's I'm that's out a fair sum. Do I have to say anything else? That's a fair summation. You have well, to you say gotta, why? Yeah, you have to. You have to well, I have some it. audio from the OTAs. <laughs> Kenny G sounding a little different. <laughs> you know what? I really have made the decision. <laughs> what was that? That was not smooth, Mike. There was nothing smooth about those routes. No. They were no, they that was was the not sound smooth. Of, do you, want, you want to hear yeah, that? Yeah, let me hear it again. <laughs> <laughs> Is that I, Al Borland? Yeah, that, Al played it for Andy <laughs> to get this recording. Oh, he's so mad right now. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> My, I have a, a few problems with the Kenny Galladay experience in 2021, and so I have made the decision. My rankings they are uh, vastly different, especially from Mike's. Mike has him as, you know, a, a number 12 overall. He's being drafted at 24. Uh, I've got him down at 26, and I don't, I don't really see the upside for Kenny Galladay. He doesn't fit the mold of uh, this season. His situation um, doesn't fit the mold of a wide receiver that I want to put on my fantasy team. And, um, you know, when he had that finish, that, that number six overall finish, I mean, great year. This is really not about Kenny Galladay's skills or abilities on the football field. This is about situation, and this is about the type of wide receiver I want on my fantasy team. That number six finish was the fewest total reception of any wide receiver inside the top ten over the last five years. He only caught 65 passes that year. He was a double-digit touchdown guy. In fact, of the 100 receivers finishing inside the top 20 over the last five years, his reception totals ranked 89 out of 100. Mm. So you know he's going to be, or historically has been, I should say it like that, a lower pass volume wide receiver. So you're counting on efficiency, you're counting on that 6-4 frame, and you're counting on touchdowns. And he finds himself in New York with a big bag of money mm -hmm. and a quarterback named Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones, we already know, number one in the league in fumbles. That's his claim to fame. But... Um, He's the only quarterback, or, or there were only two quarterbacks worse than him in terms of completion to touchdown rate in football. That was Alex Smith and Cam Newton. I think you didn't see either of those guys throw too many touchdowns last year. He was the eighth lowest when it came to 20-plus yard completions in terms of completion percentage. So that whole narrative of Daniel Jones, the great downfield passer, his completion percentage was terrible. And I think it's really hard to lay it at the feet of – you know, the receiving core that he had. Galladay is certainly better. And we do have this kind of case study of Diggs showing up and Josh Allen became an accurate downfield passer. It could happen, but am I betting on it to happen? Am I ranking him in a place where that's going to happen? That's where I'm struggling because um, Galladay's the number one receiver over the last few years in terms of catching 20-plus yard passes, and Daniel Jones is the worst at throwing them. So you have to be banking on that so, something's got to give there where Daniel Jones is succeeding and it's got to be on this low total reception count because you are getting Saquon back this year. You still have, I mean, Darius Slayton, say whatever you want about Kenny G coming in and quote unquote replacing him. He's 750 plus yards for two straight years in that offense. Sterling Shepard as well. And if you look at pro football focus, take it for what you will, but like Darius Slayton and or Sterling Shepard especially was like a really high graded wide receiver last year and you didn't see production from Daniel Jones and there wasn't targets going to Saquon. So that's the struggle for me. I mean, like Galladay last year and Slate and uh Sterling Shepard, they were ranked the same according to Pro Football Focus in terms of their wide receiver scores. And so it didn't it hasn't equated to great fantasy value for the Golden Tates or Slaytons or Sterling Shepard. So I'm just concerned that the touchdowns aren't going to be there. And unlike all those other top twenty wide receivers, if the touchdowns aren't there in double digits for them, you're still happy. But if they're not there for you with Kenny Galladay, I don't know if you're going to be happy on this team, and certainly in PPR leagues. So that's kind of why I've nerfed the val – you know, I'm worried about Daniel Jones, I'd, not Kenny Galladay the player. Certainly. The, the, the argument for me starts at uh, $72 million. You don't – like part of what Kenny Galladay was able to do in, you know, picking the team where not everyone's going to offer him all the money and he's going to try and get as much money as he can. 
But you get to pick to an extent where you are going to play. And I just I have to imagine this is me just running through as as a as a person. So I'm running a narrative here. But they're gonna Kenny Gallagher is gonna talk to them about his role in the offense. And he he wants the ball. Like he's a wide receiver. All the wide receivers always want the ball. They're always wide open. And I don't think it is a stretch at all to project more volume for Kenny Galladay. I to me, it is a stretch to say, well, he's just going to stay a very low volume guy. Like they went well, after I mean, it's, him to it's make the him historical the evidence. Sure, but that's and is Matthew Stafford better or worse than Daniel Jones? That that that's inconsequential to the volume argument. That maybe the efficiency argument, but him coming in as the clear number one with this like completely different offensive scheme, different quarterback. So uh, uh, he's not Matt Stafford. So maybe Daniel Jones will will feed him 30% of the targets. That's in the range of outcomes to me. I I just I don't think you bring in how many targets will Saquon soak up that he didn't soak up last year? Uh 100 100? Yeah, uh, he'll have 100, 100 targets. He'll have 100 plus they targets. Added Kadarius Tony, still have Shepard, Slayton, Ingram. That's I just I'm having it's it's too hard for me to project the increase. And if you give him the same volume, I think it will be less efficient with Daniel Jones than Matthew Stafford. As kind of a third-party spectator to this debate and agreeing with both takes to a degree, I do think that the volume will go up in New York. They didn't pay him to be a 60-catch uh, receiver, and that's not necessarily the only thing he can do is what he's done uh, in Detroit. But the efficiency of Daniel Jones being worse, Mike, I think you're too high, and Andy, I think you're too low. <laughs> But I'm just right, baby, at wide receiver 18. All right, what's next? But even at 18, Andy? then, if he's in best ball going as the wide receiver 24 right now, that's about that you're saying there's value to extract. I've got him with 130 targets. So it would be higher volume and, and 81 receptions. Um, so I, I, I think he will be more involved uh, and a more important piece of a worse offense fewer touchdown opportunities and and in the end he'll be a wide receiver too mike is making the decision this year to oh yeah um well he, he went to the the local cemetery and he buried somebody oh yeah and um he's making a statement and you know what i take i give him a degree of credit for this because sometimes you have to do this you have to go and make a statement with your rankings that Some, says sometimes old yeller gets rabies uh mm. Yeah, wow, too what soon, a shame. Man. Too, too soon. soon, too soon. <laughs> but you took T.Y. Hilton, and you said with your rankings, you gave him the proverbial do not draft because you tucked yeah. him back, 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 back in the back. Yes. Um, and I I boosted him. I went yeah, back. You boosted him to this you point. Boosted him, <laughs> you boosted him to a place in your rankings where Denzel Mims, Josh Reynolds, Jamison Crowder, Christian Kirk, and Marquez, Valdez, Scantling, and Jalen Rager all sit atop the ranking well, for Mr. T.Y. Hilton. There are 32 NFL teams, and so let's say you take twice that, and there are 64 wide receivers of note. He's not one of them, according to Mike, so yeah. Mike, explain yourself. Uh, I really like here. And, and T.Y., come on in here. <laughs> come on in. Come I like in. The, uh, uh, the stat in here for, you know, to just to see the other side of the argument of, you know, we started slow, but from week 12, he was the wide receiver eight. Okay, that's great. T.Y. Let's, Houston? Let's look at weeks one through 11, where T.Y. Hilton was the wide receiver 89. 89. He had fewer fantasy points than Alan Lazard, who at that point of the season had played four games. He had fewer fantasy points than Danny Amendola through 11 weeks of the season. Guys, he's gonna be he's gonna turn thirty-two this year. The injuries are already becoming a problem. We now have two years in a row of T. Y. Hilton or T. Y. Houston, how we we've dubbed him on this show. Two years in a row. He still of, plays Houston again, right? Uh, yeah, he will. Ooh, he will. Thank goodness. Twice. Uh, and he's averaged fifty yards a game for two years in a row. That super dynamic, incredible, electric T. Y. Hilton. Like he's he has aged out of that. It was uh, I think a struggle for him in free agency before he he went back with the Colts. And last year he was last year was averaging the fifty yards a game, and that was with Philip Rivers, who despite what Jason thinks, at least last year Philip Rivers 
was not washed. Phillip Rivers was still a fine player. And now Carson Wentz is coming in. Maybe Carson Wentz is okay, but last year before Carson Wentz was benched, you know, for not being good, they said you're not good. Just trying to like, are you? Which, which argument are you making here? Are you slipping into a Carson Wentz one? Well, that's part of it. I mean, Carson Wentz is is slated to be his quarterback at least for half of a season before he probably gets benched again for for being bad. But anyways, Carson Wentz was averaging two hundred throwing mud pies over there. Two hundred and thirty one passing yards per game. That would be in seventeen games, under four thousand yards in seventeen games. That's horrific. That is not going to get anything done. For fantasy purposes, you take that production, you take a, a T.Y. Hilton whose production has completely fallen off in the last two years, and I just – that you are setting a draft pick on fire. T.Y. Hilton will absolutely have two to three games this year where you go, oh, yeah, T.Y. Hilton, he's back. He's going in my fantasy lineup. Oh, pfft. thanks for thanks for tanking the next week, T.Y. So I am O-U-T – at Ray, I currently have him at wide receiver 68, and I think I'm being generous. Uh, I mean, you're probably right. But <laughs> but is it, does he play any other, uh, you know, Texas teams, like anywhere close to Houston? Because maybe it's proximity. Maybe if he plays like a Dallas. You think he'll be good against I, Dallas? Go Look, here, here, let me talk negative about P. River, please. Um, Phillip Rivers was fine. He was fine for the Indianapolis Colts. He really was. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he's a smart. Hall of Fame worthy, debatable, <laughs> uh, fringe, fringe, definitely should be. How, how much did that hurt you? To it say didn't. That? I mean, I didn't. I regretted it the moment that I even started the <laughs> phrase. But his mind is great. His football IQ is off the charts. Yes. But Philip Rivers, especially last year's Philip Rivers, is just. I mean, check down city seven point seven yards per attempt. So. T.Y. Hilton does not match Phillip Rivers. T.Y. Hilton is down there on the other side of the field where Phillip Rivers can't throw the ball to. It just didn't match up. And we did see enough explosion at the end of his age 31 season to, to at least say maybe he's not washed. What was the yards per attempt? Uh, yards per attempt passing was 7.7. .7. Mm, so is that higher or lower than 6.0? Oh? That is much higher than 6.0. Oh. Is that higher or lower than 6.7? It's higher. Okay, that's Carson Wentz the last two years. But here's a, here's the deal on the on, on that. What you have to realize is that when Carson Wentz has thrown the ball down the field, he has had nobody who can go get it. And so I, I believe. I mean, we've seen right. Isn't that the criticism on Carson Wentz? Is that like when he should check it down, he just wants to try to you know launch it. It's one of many. And so you know, T.Y. Hilton's come out this off season. He's taught. He's literally said. It's really nice to have someone who can get me the ball down the field again. So regardless mm. of what's happened in the past, what's happening right now is he is saying that Phillip Rivers couldn't and Carson Wentz currently is. Now, we don't know if he well, is my, washed. Look, I, I said Mike's probably right, but what I have a hard time doing is figuring out where the passing volume goes in Indianapolis. You can talk about Phillip Rivers' tendencies. You can talk about T.Y. Hilton's problems. Led the team in targets by a wide margin last year. I mean, <laughs> that's who he was. He's still their, their number one. And they said, hey, we like this so much, we'll bring you back for another year. Pittman didn't show me volume. You know, getting Paris Campbell back, give me a break. I'm not going to project him to lead the team in targets. So fantasy value aside, I still cannot imagine T.Y. Hilton doesn't lead the team in targets. Uh, that's 100% that's a fact. But to Mike's point here, this is an A.J. Green situation. Is he washed or is he not? A.J. Green had 104 targets. A.J. Green had plenty of opportunity to be good yes. for fantasy football last year. It doesn't matter. When the wheels fall off, the wheels fall off. So if you want to avoid T.Y. Hilton in your draft, I'm on board. You just got to – you have to decide, I think he's still got juice left. I don't. And then you either get a value or you're burning, you know, one of your, one of your picks in effigy. So I would say just decide if you believe he still has it or not. Mike – uh, let's talk to Jason for a moment, and let's talk about his Cortland Sutton, number 19 overall ranking. He's being ADP drafted, or his Oof. ADP is 29th right now. Oh, I have what a, a value. I have a huge problem with this ranking. Is it? Um, I mean, this is like you—you you have gone Benedict Arnold on Jerry Judy over here. Yeah, this ranking is a direct, personal, deep cutting uh, insult according to Mike back. and I. Uh, I have a—I have a huge problem because. 
Cortland Sutton did break out. It wasn't that spectacular of a season by way of fantasy finish. He had no competition. 19. Right. That's pretty good. I said spectacular, didn't I, Mike? <laughs> he was not the is wide receiver nine, one. Is number 19 Mike. spectacular to you? No. I, In his second year. Would you year? say that like Terry McLaurin was spectacular finishing in the 20s last year? 23 no. or something? No, but I would say that 19 is very good. I don't think that you were <laughs> exceptionally happy each and every week with Sutton's breakout season. Wait, let's pull it up. Man. Let's take a look. 1,106. This guy is hard yeah. to please. 1,106. You're going to see 45 guys do that this year. Well, you uh, saw 18 <laughs> people do more than that the year he finished at wide receiver right. 19. That's right. And uh, This is tough. So so we'll talk about um, – Let's talk about Cortland Sutton. Okay. If you remember last year, and I, I know you get to talk, but I'm just setting the table because I want to remember something that we talked about. Yeah. He was awful with Drew Locke. Once Drew Locke came in after Joe Flacco, he was terrible. 56, 41, 51, 45. That was the worry coming into last year. Injury wiped out the year. Jerry Judy, KJ Hamler, great defense. So I think 19 is is aggressive. I do. I think it's very aggressive for a player coming back from an ACL with other weapons. Sure. I mean, you can ask, is Drew Locke good enough? Is Teddy Bridgewater good enough? Those are questions as fantasy managers we have to ask. I would answer you, is, uh, is, is Joe Flacco good enough? Is Brandon Allen good enough? Because those were the quarterbacks he did it with wow, when he broke out. Drew Locke sound really bad. Oh, I know. <laughs> but it makes Teddy you Bridgewater. Remember, you remember how good Rashad Perryman was with Joe Flacco? <clears throat> it yeah. makes, Do you remember? I mean, he, he he's provided... Fitz, like, like as much as we like Fitzpatrick, he's like the unlikable Fitzpatrick. He goes out there and he throws the ball down the field. See, at, at wide receiver 29, when you're being drafted in those mid to late rounds, like he's a seventh, eighth rounder right now, there are very few guys in that range who can truly break out and, and take it up a notch. In his sophomore season, uh, he he was as good as you could have been with Joe Flacco Brandon Allen and Drew Locke, you can't ask him to do more. The ACL Terry had, yeah, it's unfortunate, but this isn't one of those things that's going to – I mean, we see tons of players tear their ACL, especially early in their career, and they come back just as strong. You saw that with Allen Robinson. It wasn't like, oh, he, he tore his ACL, so he's no good anymore. No, he's absolutely fine. He's still the 100% leader of the locker room. I was trying to read up more today about what's going on, and Vic Fangio talking about in the workout rooms, this is the guy leading – everybody he is the one right now who's already at you know he's he's participating in in OTAs uh, his he's going to be 100% full go for training camp and he's a player who really showed the ability on the NFL field unlike Jerry Judy who showed promise showed hope but like we know for sure Cortland Sutton can do it and you want to know what's a really good quality to have around Drew Locke really Good hands. Uh, really wide catch yeah, radius. Catch radius is uh, really contested important. catch ability. Uh, this is what Cortland Sutton can do, and I, I think he is a true alpha wide receiver in the NFL. Um, you know, he's a prototypical six foot three type of guy who we've seen be awesome. Unfortunately, we only got to see twenty snaps last year uh, before his leg snapped, and in those twenty snaps, he had sixty six yards against the Pittsburgh Steelers incredible defense um you know he, he came in like Demarius Thomas did he, he Demarius Thomas was his role model he got drafted to his team then they kicked him out and remember Demarius <laughs> Thomas uh you know he came in took a couple years to get going because of injury and then was good with Tim Tebow and when he got a superstar quarterback was a world beater so there's the upside there Aaron Rodgers come to town Aaron Rodgers um I just think when I'm looking at Cortland Sutton he's the clear one on this team Jerry Judy's not supplanting him. He's going to lead in targets. He's going to lead in yards. He's going to lead in touchdowns. So, yeah, it, it does come down to does that matter? Is Drew Locke good enough or is, uh, you know, Teddy Bridgewater good enough? And I would say yes. Teddy uh, Bridgewater sustained 2,000-yard receivers, almost three. Yes. Last year. Yeah. A different system, but I'm just saying that he he, did he can get, get done. he can get the job done. So I I think Cortland Sutton is a is a great value because he's not being drafted as if he broke out and is a young stud wide receiver, but he he did break out and is a young stud wide receiver, and he's being drafted like he can't like he doesn't have that upside. So that's where I am on Cortland Sutton. 
I imagine that the Broncos defense will be better than the Vikings defense this year. I imagine they will be near the same. The uh, Unfortunately for the Broncos, they will have to play the Chargers offense and the Chiefs offense uh, you know, two times a year. So your defense could be good, but you, you still have to throw the ball and catch up. Okay. All right. That splaining was mediocre at best. Mm, I disagree. <laughs> Official grade? <laughs> mediocre. Our final player that we need some explanation on is – Chris Godwin, Andy has him the highest of us. He has him more in line with his ADP. Jason and I are a little bit behind the times here on our ranking of Chris Godwin. And this is, you know what? I, I don't need an explanation here. Okay. I need you just. Great. Just, I'm out of here. <laughs> show's done. No, I raise my confidence. <laughs> Boost my love back up for Chris Godwin. I need my love for Chris Godwin back at 2020 levels. I have 2021, where uh, I'm, a, I'm a little shook at, at what happened last year, and it feels dumb. Yeah, this it feels really dumb. I agree completely with you, Mike. This is not an explain yourself like we think you're stupid here. This is like a I'm stupid. Pump, pump yourself up. Yeah. Pump, pump up, Chris Godwin. Pump, pump, pump it up. I think that's what the fantasy football industry needs right now. Yes, yeah. we, the players need to renew their their once budding love of Chris Godwin. And uh, because it, it wasn't great last year. It wasn't a fun ride. The Chris Godwin experience was nothing like the year before when he was, what, the wide receiver one or two based on your scoring format in the entire league? Yep. Um, in 2019, 104 receptions, 1,618 yards, and 11 touchdowns. And then last year it came along, and, and you were bummed out, and Mike Evans played pretty well, and Tom Brady spread the ball around, and you were like, what am I going to do with Chris Godwin? And I think it's important that people recognize that he is the same great wide receiver that just had a year of disruption. And when you go and look, you know, all of last year, his, his 17 game pace was 92 receptions for 1,192 yards and 10. If you go from week 10 on, which is when the offense got it together and he was back out there on the field and Antonio Brown was there, it was 90 for 12, 62 and 12. He was one of the most heavily targeted red zone wide receivers in football. In fact, his teammate was one of the only ones more targeted in the red zone, but he was the eighth highest red zone wide receiver in all of football, missed some time, scored each of the last three weeks, and really brought the fire when you weren't, you know, you might have been out because you didn't have him earlier in the year or you just weren't, you know, riding the high of Chris Godwin. And the important thing is to remember this is the same physically, physically gifted wide receiver. Brady's quarterback rating when targeting him was 131.7. That's the fifth highest in football. A little bit Tyler Lockett you know, ask when it comes to like the Wilson Lockett connection, fourth highest catch rate among wide receivers. In fact, if you look over the past two years, I think 19 and 20, like he is at the very tippy top of catch rate. Um, you know, over the last two years, only Michael Thomas, Devonte Adams, Julio and Diggs average more receiving yards per game. So he's going out there and doing the same thing that he does. Now, the one area that I think there is a difference is you, the, the kind of yards per catch and the, the, the passing volume that you had with the old Tampa Bay offense, right, where Jameis Winston and you saw the bigger yardage totals from Godwin. But other than the yardage totals, I think, you know, I think ranking him at 18, 19, 20 and beyond is probably just too low. The truth about Godwin in this offense is not the number one overall, number two overall year, but it's certainly not last season. And it's certainly not... 25 26 because you know i don't know what the odds are but there's a chance godwin's the best fantasy option on this team there he is. did it with evans there two years ago he competed with him when he was actually there last year and so i think people just need a reset the godwin hype reset because he's still very young still very talented and we've all projected brady as a great value someone that can throw 40 plus touchdowns did it last year and uh, assuming he stays healthy, Godwin may be a steal. Yeah, Godwin is – I think it's most fair to look from week nine on. He had a bad week in week nine, but that's when Antonio Brown came. That's when all three pass catchers were healthy the rest of the way. And during that stretch, he was still the wide receiver 14. And he was pretty darn consistent for a wide receiver. If you really remember back to last year, I'm looking at the game logs, and the experience of having Godwin, it was – as bad as any player in fantasy football. You you start week one, he's wide receiver 29. You're like, okay, a little disappointed. He could do better, but he still had 79 yards. Good game. Oh, he got injured. 
Okay, so I don't get him the next week. The next week he comes back. He gets injured in that game. Still puts up 64 and a touchdown if you decided to play him. But then he gets injured. He's out the next game. He's out the next game. Comes back the next game and doesn't play a full set of snaps, isn't really involved, and has a bad game. So you probably didn't play him then. So you might not have played him the next week, not knowing if he was the guy, when he was the wide receiver eight. So then he gets injured, and he was out. So going into week nine, you literally had, I mean, if you held on to him. Yeah, that's rough. It was just like the entire season was gone. You've been beat up. But once he was back, he was the wide receiver 14 the rest of the way. He's a good wide receiver. This is not a this is not a disagreement in any way, shape, or form. I think where Godwin is being drafted is a value. All right. Enough explaining, Brooks. Yeah, well done, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> good. Let's do some <laughs> dynasty talk. Dynasty download. What? Why am I in the video? <laughs> this, is, this is supposed to be a mic, a mic video. Oh, that was the funniest one yet. Huh. Another Dynasty download segment. Trade for, trade away, or hold. Curtis Samuel signed the three-year, $34 million contract with the Washington football team. Who Look, I'm going to ask for it at this point. Washington, name your football team. I think we've given you some time. It's you, time to name you're not, it. You're not cool just being the football team? No. No, no I'm not. No, not forever. I mean, I think the jerseys look great and everything. I do too. But I mean, we we've we've reached the age, you know, where they come up with a name. They can do it. They can. They if, can do it. If you if you give me a year and a half, I will be able to name something. Yeah, I mean, because uh, we're going to be the football team again this year, right? Yes, it is the I football so. team. This and they're season. hoping nobody ever asks them for a real name. They're hoping this just stays forever. You I mean, you want them to just stay Washington football team? Uh, it doesn't really bother me. The Washington footballs. That's worse. I would rather have them be the football team. But, um, yeah, so when it comes to Curtis Samuel. 24 years old, younger than Terry McLaurin. So get that in your head that you're yeah. not – because it's easy to think McLaurin's the young gun and then Samuel's been around the block. Nope, uh, he's like a year – almost two years older. Um, what are you doing, trade for, trade away, or hold? I, I think that you're going to want to trade for Curtis Samuel because really? here's why. One, you just brought up the age. He's he's surprisingly young for someone switching teams, being on another contract. But the utilization and the way that they're going to use him is completely different. I mean, you cannot extrapolate what happened last year um, in Carolina with what's going to happen this year. Now, maybe that's a bad thing because he was, was fine. Say, wouldn't you want it? Yeah, absolutely. You could say, oh, it, it was nice to have them manufacture touches, use him in the slot. He was good at towards the end of the year, very consistent, finally got it together. But in fantasy in general, you want the outside receiver. You want the player who has the chance at the touchdown uh, game, not just the dink and dunk across the middle from the slot. And he's going to go definitely back to the outside. When he was with this regime in Carolina, he was an outside wide receiver. He was a one-route wide receiver. Right. He was a one-route outside wide receiver. He just ran a nine the whole time. And then it completely switched up, became a slot wide receiver. And remember, this offseason – they go out and they spend money for, for Curtis Samuel. This was a big get for them. And then they go sign Adam Humphreys. They're not looking at Curtis Samuel as their slot. They're putting him on the other outside. And then they said, oh, we still need a slot. Um, so they got Adam Humphreys. This is, this is going to be a guy who has the opportunity at a young age with a lot of talent with a quarterback who can throw a deep ball. Because Curtis Samuel, if you remember those videos of him being open and just these oh, deep, yeah. deep ball misses over and over um, – Kyle, Those, it was Kyle Allen. It was everybody, but yeah. yes, Kyle Allen was was the the main culprit. Um, I I think that he's not going to cost you much to get Curtis Samuel. Nobody, there's not like a big hype train for Curtis Samuel. Nobody's like, oh, I, I, he's untouchable. Well, I think ask it's for it, someone else. I think it's because it's muddy, and I like I I would not personally. I don't read too much in his utilization two years ago. I don't think you take. I mean, I don't think they're happy with his utilization two years ago, and you don't just you know put him back into that role after he has such success last year. I guess well, I think he's definitely people. going to the outside. I think it will take a ton of slot snaps. I completely disagree. Yeah. I think he'll be, be far more utilized like he was in Carolina. I mean, that's that's the regime. Yeah, like, but that's it, the that's the that's but, the offense. But you put a player in a position as a rookie and they do different things their second year and their third year in the league. But it's it's not it's this but it's the, they, they, last year was a last year wasn't the Rivera playbook. No, I know. But for, for Curtis Samuel, it wasn't. Right. 
So yeah. why? I just, I'm trying Andy to figure is, out why Andy is, is saying that Rivera is going to watch the Panthers and say he succeeded in the slot, so I want to move him to the slot and use him the way that no, we I, saw success. Not right? like a formal – he's not filing forms to move him into the slot. He's just putting <laughs> the player out on the uh, field in the way that he's going to succeed. Form 1039. I mean, you you can go read Washington. I mean, they're putting him in the backfield a ton. Yep. That's what, Car that's what Carolina that. did last year. I mean, a ton, and he had success. They're putting him in the slot. I mean – there, there's opportunities for him all over the field. Rivera I just put him in the backfield way more a couple years ago. Yeah, they put he put him back there a bunch. But when a rookie comes in, you put him in a position to succeed. We've talked about the maturing route tree of about a million rookies. I'm just saying that if you pay a guy that kind of money, logic says put him in a position to succeed. I don't think we're disagreeing here. I just think that they'll use him in a in a an evolving way as opposed to like a rookie. I, I yeah I mean we we're just gonna agree to disagree here and that's not to say he won't play a, a snap in the slot of course he will every wide receiver moves around a little bit um, but my point is they 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 paid him alpha outside wide receiver money which is what they drafted him to be originally and then they signed a slot wide receiver so I mean everything that the team and the humans uh, show me is that they're going to go back to the Carolina uh, utilization but my point is. As he evolved as a player, uh, it wasn't maybe where he was on the field. Just he was he got better last year and was successful. Now, if you put him in that alpha role uh, with Ryan Fitzpatrick, I think he could be a real fantasy. You know, he's he, he's like a sleeper this year, and he's young. So for dynasty, so you've warmed on him a lot. I have since warmed the on him a lot. Yes, I. So have, you're a trade for in dynasty. I am. I I think it's too. I'm probably just a hold. Uh, you know, I don't think you get a lot trading him away right now because nobody knows what Washington's going to be. And I think trading for him is too risky, knowing that McLaurin's the alpha for sure and uh, not knowing what this offense is going to do with him. So he's a hold for me, Mike. What is he for you? Uh, he's he is he's just a hold for me. Uh, but I lean more towards what, what Jason is talking about. Of I'm not projecting huge things for Curtis Samuel, but this is the time of the year when you got to – he got to call a couple shots, and I think that calling the shot on Curtis Samuel having like a really, really productive fantasy season, I think that's a, a good bet for a low investment so, right now. So let me ask you this, Jay. If you think he's going to line up in the outside, on the outside, and we saw what he did last year, I think he was uh, the wide receiver. Let me pull it up. From week seven on, he's the wide receiver 10, right? Mm -hmm. As many wide receiver one weeks as Stephon Diggs. So you know that his potential output is high, especially if they line him up in the backfield some, give him special plays and end arounds, and he's on the outside. What odds do you give him to outperform Terry McLaurin? Because you got the oh, big, you got big money very, contract. Very little. You got him on the outside just like McLaurin is, yeah. and you have the head, the offensive coordinator who loves him. No, I, I, I don't have high odds that he would outperform Terry McLaurin. I think Terry McLaurin will be the number one target. But what I, what I see here – um, you know, you've got ex examples both from just NFL history every single year where there are multiple wide receivers who are top 24 from the same team. Um, and then you've seen that with Ryan Fitzpatrick, where he takes his one and two, he takes his Brandon Marshall, his Eric Decker, and he says, I just love you guys. I'm just going to keep throwing the ball to you guys. You're enough for me. Um, and I could see that becoming the situation. Not that he necessarily overtakes, you know, Decker didn't necessarily overtake uh, Brandon Marshall because of the targets, but the touchdowns could go Curtis Samuel's way as coverage goes towards Terry McLaurin. So I could I could easily see that happening. You know, we've got a regression alert for uh, Logan Thomas on this team, and I think that that could be an example of like these little targets that went to Logan Thomas and JD McKissick. Like Fitzpatrick's going to come out and be like, "You're my guy. You're my guy. Let's let's go fly." See, you <laughs> broke a you broke a very serious promise in this whole debate. You know what that was? I'm, I'm you promised worried. you would never use Adam Humphreys in an argument again. Did I? Well, you should have. I, yeah, Nobody I, should I, ever I, use him in an argument again. I didn't think again. we had to say it out loud. Yeah, that was a that was, was an un, unspoken understood. promise. Yeah, I mean that's that's fair. I mean that's I'm, not. But I'm not I'm not using <laughs> him in anything that says that he's going to do anything good. <laughs> but put put Adam Humphreys on the outside. I didn't know we still talked about Adam Humphreys in fantasy. That's Pronounced good to know. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. All right, we want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the podcast. The Justin Jefferson signed football. Right now, the price is $26.25, and it ends on Thursday night. You can go check that out at pristineauction.com. 
I know Jason won't be bidding here, but Mike, Jamar Chase signed NFL football, $53.34. Oh, man. Jason, does that make you really mad that he signed an NFL football before he's he's done anything in the NFL? Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, honestly, I can't even believe Pristine. The contention this. on this what? episode, it just it, <laughs> it's accelerated yeah. up. Well, we – This is so, like an NFL or NBA playoff will game. You, the fouls are hard. Owl, after this show, will you film the boxing – um, you know, so that we can put it on social because that's what whenever we leave the explain ourselves, we, we just go to fight. the ring, yeah, and we just you know get out the rest of the aggression. Maybe some foosball, but you can use the registration code Ballers to get ten dollars off at pristineauction.com. That'll do it for today's episode. But never fear, Foot Clan, there will be another before you know it. Enjoy one, the UDK. It ends, and then we rise from the ashes in right. two days. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.